Um, I think that it's, um, it's certainly a rollicking narrative um, and it's pretty much unputdownable uh, that once one is drawn in to the narrative um, of Ambrosio and of the attempts of Raymond and Agnes um, to elope, um, it is uh, an intoxicating um, tale. Uh, but really, I think that it's a text that allows us to reflect on what we think we're getting from literature. Is literature didactic? Is it there to teach us how to be better people? Um, is it there to somehow um, incorporate us um, into a civil society? Well, yes, some books clearly are. Or is literature about challenging what we think it is to be human? Is literature um, a way of uh, provoking the reader um, into uh, wondering or considering whether a critique for example, of institutional power, um, such as is given um, here uh, with, uh, with the Catholic Church, and can at the same time uh, be a, tra a potentially attractive fulfilment of violent fantasies. And throughout the book, uh, one is on the one hand uh, feeling that, yes, there is um, a critique um, and, a, um, and a sustained um, attack um, on corrupt practices. On the other hand, one feels that one is complicit in these um, and that there is an appeal. There's a very voyeuristic appeal, for example. Um, there um, is a lot of um, toying with the reader um, in terms of what uh, the reader's desires might be. Why are you reading this? Why are you continuing to actually put yourself through um, this narrative. What is the pleasure of this particular story for the reader? And I think that that's uh, really uh, why we should put the monk um, in the same category as the picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde, uh, Lolita by Vladimir Nabokov, uh, for example. Those sorts of texts, ones that caused uh, comparable um, outrage and upset, uh, but which have stood the test of time because they can't be put into a simple category um, and they are full of difficulties and contradictions um, and ways of um, insisting that we reassess literature and the place of the writer in our society today.